Today is just you and me. How you doing? How you doing? It's your boy, Chai Louie. Hope you're David well. You feel this well. You already know what we're here for. Nuna, Rot and Mango. Teen lovers killing everyone that won't let them be together. Then host party in the murder house. Uh, oh boy. Bada, bada bing, bada, bada boom. The steps are pretty simple. You aim, pull the trigger, and you shoot. And then you repeat. Huh? It's pretty standard. The first few times that Johnny is doing this, he's struggling a little bit, but the practice round, the more he does it, it's helping him get into the groove. It's helping him understand how to be one with the gun. And now this time, it's going to be so much easier. There's a it's bar. locked, loaded, <laughs> ready to go. Johnny's girlfriend, Cassandra, is scrunching up her nose in disgust. She's got her arms stretched out as far away from herself as possible, and she's just pouring bleach onto the bathroom floor. Listen, home renovation is typically not the ideal way that couples want to spend their time, mm -hmm. but they're about to host this massive party, and they need the house to be somewhat presentable. They're scrambling to get all these little mini projects around the house done. I mean, Cassandra has used so much bleach. The bottle is empty by the time that she's done with one bathroom. Well, the house and now smell this like bleach very strong scent for of bleach a minute. and whatever else she was originally trying to clean up is so overpowering, it's piercing through her nostrils. At this point, if she stays in the restroom any longer, she's going to get high on the fumes. But that's where Johnny's gun comes in handy. His cock gun. Cassandra closes the door halfway behind her. Johnny walks up and he's got this tube shaped dispenser. He pulls the metal trigger and this thick white silicone liquid comes out. I mean, it's basically an industrial form of a white silicone glue and it's going to seal the entire seams of the door. I mean, the directions are pretty easy. Aim, pull the trigger and shoot. Why are you doing that? The silicone parts, they start flowing out of the caulking gun. He repeats the process across the perimeters of the interior doors. Effectively, he glues the doors of the entire house shut every interior door into the bedroom into the restroom he's super glued it so that you cannot open it what? even if you want to get inside you can't get inside if you're inside, inside you can't get out huh okay and right. the two 17 year old right. cassandra and 19 year old johnny they're crossing their fingers i mean hopefully none of the guests at the party would be able to smell the two dead bodies upstairs not after the bleach not after they glued the door shut right Two dead bodies. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> boy, have you lost your mind? I'll help you. Hell no. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Why, why still hold the party though? Like what? I don't get that. Who did we they would like to thank kill? today's sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. They are volunteer based and oh, provide fire. free medical care and humanitarian that's aid to fire. thousands of injured and ill children in the Middle East. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to Yo. support Rotten Mango's growing team of dedicated researchers and translators. And we would also like to thank our listeners for your continued support as we work on our mission to be worthy advocates. Hey. As always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. Now, some brief disclaimers before we start today's video. Some names have been changed for privacy for different individuals and witnesses involved, and some statements have been condensed for time. There are mentions of CSA as well as relational violence, and perhaps the biggest theme throughout this entire episode is self-exit attempts. If anyone you know or if a loved one you know is struggling or if maybe you are, resources will be linked in the show notes. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Let's do it. There was something really odd happening nice in a suburban town though. outside of Atlanta. In the span of a week, there had been a series of attacks. Three couples had been attacked in three separate homes. Which, you know, okay, maybe the investigators believe that some serial killer is on the loose targeting random couples in homes. But interestingly enough, there are no signs of a break-in in any of the homes. April 2nd, 2017, couple A is found attacked in their beds at night. No signs of a break-in. The entire house is ransacked and they are left with their throats slit. Six days later, April 8th, 2017, couple B are attacked right when they walk into their house. They're sprayed with bear mace. It's like pepper spray, but stronger. It's for bears. They're sprayed with bear mace Oy. and beaten over the heads with a metal bat. And then just a day later, 
Couple C is found slumped on top of each other in a bathroom covered, just smeared in blood, unconscious. All in one neighborhood? The investigators working the case, they would find some very interesting things. These were clearly not random attacks. Couple C was found to have been driving Couple B's car. So Couple C and Couple B are connected. Okay. Couple C's intimate videos were found on Couple A's phone. So Couple C and Couple A are connected. But how are all three couples connected? Yeah, hey. And what set off the sequence of events that would kill two of them and almost leave the other four dead? What are the other four the saying? Investigators believe couple not C dead. are the ones linking all three couples together. They are the connection. They have couple B's car. Their videos are found on couple A's phone. And they had just been discovered by the authorities in the restroom, unconscious, covered in blood. I mean, they're bleeding out. They need to be rushed to the emergency room ASAP. And if they don't make it out, if they don't live, there's going to be so many unanswered questions. So now mm. all the police can do is wait for 19-year-old Johnny Ryder and 17-year-old Cassandra Borge to wake up. Some adults will say that teenage love is strong because there's a ridiculous amount of hormones that make teenagers believe this is the last love that I will ever feel in my life. Cap. Adults will try to tell their teenage kids, no, don't worry. It's because your hormones are going crazy. The emotions are so extreme. There's going to be other people out there for you. This is not the only fish in the sea. True. This is true. Yeah. Well, 19-year-old Johnny does not believe in all of that. He's 19. He's almost 20. And he had found his freaking soulmate. 17-year-old Cassandra. Listen, love is about loving every little part of your partner. I mean, even the stuff Liar! that other people might think is just <laughs> not as exciting. And Johnny finds every little thing about Cassandra so absolutely perfect. Like, it's kind of cute that all of her phone passwords are just one, two, three, four. She likes it so uncomplicated, but at the same time, she herself is so complicated. She's like this short little five foot, three inch ball of energy. And you would expect with her short little height, she's not gonna be a fighter. But then you find out that she takes Tan Su Do. It's a Korean martial arts. She's been doing it for like six years of her life and she knows how to do a knife hand strike where you strike and break the concrete blocks with the edge of your hand. Oh, or like a roundhouse kick where you can spin your full body, jump up with your foot in the air and strike something. I can do. Or someone. I can do one. Of... All right, my fault, my fault. I could probably do one of them though if I really try. Like, think about it. I'm pretty limber on my feet. Think about it, think about it. Have you thought about it? Yeah, see? I'm glad you agree. I'm glad you agree. To all the ones that didn't agree, you're glazing. You're just glazing on me. I'm not gonna lie. You're a hater. <laughs> Jump up with your foot in the air and strike something or someone. She even took Shaolin Kung Fu, Chinese Kung Fu. I mean, she's so good at it that she went on these international trips in China to compete in tournaments. Oh, yeah, shit. Really? Actually, very good. And she's so... Just so cool. Right. But then that she had to quit. Cool. She had to give it all up because, Why? you know, she said her emotions and feelings were all over the place. She wasn't able to sit there and really focus on the movements and be in that headspace that you need for martial arts. Mm. And Johnny felt like there's something that he could help with. He could save her from that. What? To Johnny, I mean, Cassandra's kind of the perfect girl, the definition of a soulmate. And even though they had only been dating a few weeks, he felt like they had been together for a freaking lifetime. Right, right, He's right. sitting on the ledge of a parking lot in downtown Atlanta, and Cassandra's right next to him, and they see the whole city. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's peaceful. It's a parking lot, so it's not a tourist attraction. They're basically alone. And for a while, they're talking. They're listening to music. But then there's this, there's this moment of silence where they're just taking in the view and Johnny turns to look at Cassandra. She looks at him and he just sees this burst of purple around her. And he's like, I don't think I'm on drugs right now, but maybe I am. Purple? But I don't think so. It's like an aura, a glowing light orb radiating out of her body, a light bursting out of her. Like she's the center of the universe, the core of this parking lot. And the world just revolves around <laughs> Cassandra. <laughs> Hold on, I got a sound for this. I do got a sound for this. I don't think I have a sound for this. I might have to be the sound for this. Yo, Jit tripping. You know, it's the core of this parking lot and the world just revolves around Cassandra. And he's just staring in awe. Right. Of course, Cassandra starts to feel a little bit self-conscious. Like, wait, what is it? Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you just staring at me? Oh, it's a very intense look. I see purple all around you. 
What? Boy. Purple is a sign of love, and I think this is love at first sight. You gotta slow down with them Johnny projections. Johnny is hooked. With them hallucinations. He knows from that moment, deep down, that moment forward, Cassandra is the girl that he cannot live without. Right. Which is crazy, considering Johnny and his ex-wife just divorced two weeks ago, but that's fine. I thought he was Did 20. He what, is, her, what do you mean ex-wife? Yeah. Oh, they just met. Basically. What he is? cannot live without 17-year-old Cassandra. Ex-wife? Yeah. He's 19? Divorced. Just divorced. Okay. The police are standing in front of a white suburban. <laughs> Boy, have you lost your mind? Cause no, no, no. I'll help you find it. Oh God, though. No. Why you gotta chill? Yo, ex-wife, bruh. How long was they married? Like three days? Oh, man. They spent longer again to know each other and smash it than actually being married. Live without 17-year-old Cassandra. Jesus. He's 19. Yeah. He just divorced. Just divorced. <laughs> yeah, the husband's The police funny. are standing in front of a white suburban just home divorced. in the middle of a very quiet neighborhood. Okay. It's not even an isolated home. It's very suburban. There's neighbors on both sides of this house. Across the tiny little road, there's more neighbors. I mean, think of a regular neighborhood. But before they can even force their way into this house, they feel like something's not right. And you know caulk? It's like construction glue. It comes yeah, in the yeah. tube that you push through the nozzle. You yeah, aim, yeah. point, shoot. I try yeah, to sniff it That one white, time. flexible material. The cops are standing Bad there, idea. staring at the front door of this random residential house. And the front door has been cocked shut. It's been glued shut. The police force their way into the house. What? And it's not looking good. The entire first floor is trashed. There's cigarette butts scattered throughout the living room, the garage, on the couch, partially burnt, which wow. honestly probably a fire hazard, but that's the least of their worries right now. There's prescription bottles filled with cigarette butts just laying around, multiple tubes of caulk just on the ground, likely the ones that glued every single door in this house shut. There's mason jars on the ground in the kitchen. There's just a mound of fried rice. On the why, floor. Why would you next waste? To the sink. Not on a plate or in a container on the floor. Just a mound of fried rice on the floor. Oh directly. my God. There's rotting food everywhere. There's dishes with remnants of moldy food piling up in the sink. I mean, the place looks completely ransacked. Why would you waste that the fried rice? head upstairs and some of the interior doors in the house also glued shut, just like the front door. I'm confused. Why? Straight. Why this nigga gluing they break doors? Into each of the rooms. <laughs> and now they understand why. There are two dead bodies in two separate rooms of this home. In one of the bedrooms, they find a man's body laying on the bed. His well, why is he gluing the front door though? Like that's gonna stop folks. Like why? And also, did he glue the door after he? But that's mad suspicious. I'm not gonna hold you. This doesn't seem like a well thought. Yeah, let me glue the door shut. <laughs> they break into each of the rooms and now they understand why. There are two dead bodies in two separate rooms of this home. In one of the bedrooms, they find a man's body laying on the bed. His right leg is hanging off the bed. I mean, it appears that he had been attacked in his sleep, attacked badly. There's evidence that he's beaten, stabbed, his throat is slit. There's bloody shoe prints embedded onto the bed sheets, indicating that whoever did this to this man hated this guy so much that they physically stomped on him to inflict more injuries. Damn. On him where? on his face, on his torso oh. area, primarily where most of the injuries were inflicted. Hmm. Above the headboard where the man is laying, there's a pair of just bloody handprints stamped onto the wall. The attack was so vicious, there's blood splatter all up on the walls, on the lampshades, on the ceiling. The ceiling fan has blood. It's a very gruesome crime scene. The officers then head to the restroom where they find another body, the body of a woman on the bathroom floor. She too has been beaten and her throat has been slit. The door to the restroom had also been glued shut. The entire upstairs of this random, calm, peaceful residential house in the middle of a normal neighborhood is covered in blood. Bloody drag marks left on the floor, blood on the walls. The house the police had broken into was where Cassandra lived. The bodies belonged to couple A, Wendy and Randall Bjorg, Cassandra's grandparents and left next to grandma wendy's body was grandpa is a little bottle of empty bleach the day after cassandra's grandparents oh, bodies are okay. found johnny Ryder, cassandra's boyfriend leaves his mother a voicemail in it his voice sounds very weak he's barely audible hey ma it's johnny i'm crazy i'm evil 
And then he whispers so low that you can barely hear him. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm not well. I'm mentally crazy. I'm dying as we speak. I love you. I'll see you later, okay? I love you. Bye. Hey, Ma. It's Johnny. I'm crazy. I'm evil. So how are you okay? I'm sorry. Tell me, Andy, I'm sorry. Tell Kevin, I'm sorry. Who the hell is Kevin and Mindy? I'm not well. I mean, yeah, I could tell. I'm dying as we speak. Like, are you, you get stabbed? I love you. I'll see you later, okay? Love you. What is he asking forgiveness for? Right. The voicemail will be sent right before Johnny Ryder and his girlfriend Cassandra are found unconscious on the floor of a restroom. A few days after they're taken to the emergency room, Cassandra wakes up in the hospital bed. She almost died. And the first few people that she's talking to since coming back to, since becoming conscious again, are detectives. They're asking her what the hell happened in that restroom. I tried to, um, I tried to self-exit. The detectives try to ask, why would you do that, sweetie? Tell me why. I couldn't take it anymore. I didn't know what else to do, where else to go. I just got really like angry and depressed, and I don't know. I just kind of felt like the whole world was collapsing on me. What Shoot. happened here? I tried to kill myself. Why would you do that, sweetie? Tell me why. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I didn't know where else to go. I didn't know what else to do. And then when one night, I just got like really, really, really angry and depressed, and I just, I don't know, I just felt like the whole world was kind of just like collapsing on me, and I just wanted to like to end it. I know you know why. I'm here. I just need to understand why, Cassandra. Talk to me, please. What I can't do, I can't talk to you unless you are being honest with me. Cassandra starts sharing with the detectives the story of how her grandparents were murdered in cold blood. Cassandra sounds like she's in a lot of pain while she's forcing herself to remember all the little details of how she witnessed her grandparents' murder. Because she was there when it happened. Right. Like, Johnny, my doing boyfriend, the murdering. picked out which knife he wanted. Which one did he choose? It was the sharpest one. It was like the biggest one. And then he started using it on my grandpa. And then, and then... And then we just slit his throat. Pause there. We. You said we. We. Oh, he. I didn't touch my grandpa. I didn't. Whoa. Unless you be honest with me. I wasn't born and intentionally thought about it. Thought about doing that. Thought about doing what? Say it. Once you say it, it's out. Killing my grandparents. Back to the night of the murder. It's the middle of the night, maybe just past midnight. Cassandra is in the room with her grandma, Wendy, and Grandpa Randall is asleep in a separate room. Grandpa Randall! Separately. Cassandra is I in Wendy's room Randall. when she freezes. Huh? Wait, what was that noise? I don't know. She strains to listen, but it's no use because the, the noise is getting louder. She can hear it. It's like grunting, the sound of a fist hitting flesh. Imagine if you were to punch a bag of meat. Oh, I'm It sounds like someone's getting beat up in the next room. Wait. That's what it sounds like. Wait. Someone is in a lot of pain. They're yelling and the screaming starts and she knows exactly what she's listening to. Johnny, her 19-year-old boyfriend, is beating her grandfather to death. Cassandra freezes. I mean, what is she supposed to do? Oh my God, oh my God, her grandpa is gonna die. Johnny is going to kill her grandpa. What can she even do right now? Suddenly she starts feeling this overwhelming rush overtake her entire body. It's like a tingling sensation. And she turns to her grandma, Grandma Wendy, grabs the tire iron in her hands and whacks her grandma on the back of the head. For what the fuck? A week Why? after the murders, Cassandra and the two other people, they've got bags of McDonald's with them. A few orders of fries, milkshakes, and burgers. Mm -hmm. They're setting up the little table to get ready to eat family style. They're going to lay all the fries out. They're putting the milkshakes down, putting in the straws. And Cassandra's telling the two people about how sick of hospital food she's been. Yeah, I bet, I bet. I mean, there was one point where I couldn't even eat anymore. Briefly, the two others that are with Cassandra decide to step out for a moment before they start eating. Cassandra glances around. She checks out the room. It's a pretty small room, bare, just a door leading into the hallway. There's no windows. There's no artwork, no paintings, just empty space. Okay. She's completely alone now. 
She looks to her left, then to her right, and then she looks up. And then she looks straight in front of her, where there is a camera pointed eye level at her face. And she just stares into the camera, no emotions on her face. Her face is completely blank, but her eyes are wide, so alert, it almost looks like she's going to go cross-eyed. Like she's trying to peer into the soul of whoever is watching on the other end of the camera. It's like Cassandra has broken why the her, fourth Why wall. her eyebrows look so, like, like cartoonishly dark, though? <laughs> like what, bro? It's like the, it's the most obvious thing on her face. <laughs> and her nose is like dead ass shotgun barrels. Wow, her face shape kind of funny. <laughs> hey, shot. No, not shots out to you. You a murderer. What the fuck? Okay, continue. Whoever is watching on the other end of the camera. It's like Cassandra has broken the fourth wall. For how long? A few seconds. I mean, it feels like eternity as, as I was watching it. She's wearing this dark forest green jumpsuit. Her hair is tied up in a messy bun. She looks like a teenager that just woke up. It's messy, all she's right. She's got these giant casts around her arms that come almost up to her elbows. Like she's wearing oven mitts and they're tied together. She's got a giant band-aid on her neck and she just stares into the camera. No, no, don't do it too, though. And she's alone Back in your the interrogation ass. Well, room. You look adorable, so it's with, fine. With, I guess, us. Plus, you knew that. The camera. You could probably get away with that. And she stares before leaning down and slowly using her mouth to vacuum up a french fry because she can't use her arms. Why not? Was she's make, keeping eye contact? Nah, no, that'd she be- she makes eye contact <laughs> and then leaves. You know, that'd be terrifying though. Nah, husband Bagel's thinking of the craziest. <laughs> Could you imagine? Nah, like uh, some, someone looking at you and slowly like, Nah, I'd have to I'd have to reach in through the camera and smack you on the forehead or some shit. Or I'd throw a table at your face. <laughs> oh God. Wait, she's make keep. Wait, eye why contact? can't why can't she use her no, arms? She breaks eye contact and then leans down <laughs> to to the the and she just starts crunching. Yo, he's crunch, thinking crunch, of the, crunch, the most terrifying. Then into the camera, glances around, then leans back down, vacuums up another French fry, crunch, crunch, crunch. Then another. Then she leans down and takes a sip of her milkshake, and then she decides, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. She uses her cast like a giant scooper, scoops up the burger, and just starts eating in silence while periodically staring into the depths of the camera. Welcome to Cassandra's interrogation tapes. Cassandra will matter-of-factly share her side of the story of why she chose to kill the only people that ever cared for her. This is her version of events. There are very few reasons why someone might torture another person most of the reasons don't make sense right they could just be sadistic they get off on the power that they hold over the other party and the pain that they're eliciting from this person is thrilling it's exciting they're getting off on it yeah perhaps it's vengeance maybe the person that they're torturing has done something so unspeakable so heinous that even death wouldn't be good revenge or i mean that sounds like it's just in the movies the most common reason I imagine to torture someone is to extract information. If yeah. you have information that the CIA wants, they might subject you to what they call, quote, enhanced interrogations, AKA torture. They cut off your fingers. Opinion. Stress positions, taking your fingernails so painful, that your body is shaking and waterboarding. Agony. They'll put you in these boxes, in these contorted positions where every second feels like there's needles sticking into every part of your muscles. There's just nonstop pain. What? They'll play loud music to the point where you cannot get a single second of sleep. It is so all consuming. You can't even think straight. Sometimes they use frequencies to do that. You feel like you're losing your mind. You want it to stop. Honestly, you would do anything at this point for it to just stop. Please just stop it. I got that toxic part. Part of me that's like i be chilling through all that but nah boy if i wake up the wrong way i'm losing my mind <laughs> so imagine not being able to sleep because of like loud music or, or just a little sound in the back of your ear that is just piercing enough to annoy you but like oh boy yeah yeah whatever they whatever they want to know they might get it they'll play loud music to the point where you cannot get a single second I lose of sleep it. it is so all consuming you can't even think straight sometimes they use frequencies to do that you feel like you're losing your mind you want it to stop honestly you would do anything at this point for it to just stop please yeah. just stop it yeah sometimes if they're really desperate they will allegedly waterboard you 
Do you feel like you're drowning? I've been waterboarded before. But they say that there is no greater torture than when you're forced to watch your loved one die. Oh. That's why in all the movies, they tie up the hero's loved ones and they say, give up that information or else we're going to kill this person. It's a torture so vile that I doubt that the CIA would even take part in it, which is saying a lot. Cassandra drags her grandma's bloodied body into the room next door. She's leaving these bloody marks behind and she joins Johnny and her grandpa. Look. They did not bring a backpack with duct tape, a tire iron, and throw dirty old t-shirts across their mouths to cover their faces to walk out of this house with nothing. We need the safe code. Johnny looks at Cassandra. Can you grab some knives? Cassandra runs downstairs to the kitchen, grabs the three biggest knives that she can find, butcher knives, runs back up, hands them to Johnny. What's the safe code, Grandma? They're questioning Grandma Wendy, and they know that she has a safe in her closet, but they need the code to get it. Oh, to boy, show Grandma and Wendy better have $10 million. Even then, that wouldn't be enough. Even then, that wouldn't be enough. But this, I swear, if it's for some small, meager, paltry amount, bro, that, like, like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? I'm mad confused why they're doing this. Grandma Wendy, and they know that she has a safe in her closet, but they need the code to get it to show her, Grandma Wendy, that they're so very serious about this. They're not messing around right now. Johnny grabs the knife and in front of Grandma Wendy, starts stabbing oh. Grandpa Randall in the stomach. Once, twice, three, four, oh five, gosh. more than five times. And Grandma Wendy starts pleading with them, her own granddaughter, I'll give you the money, I'll give you my keys, I'll give you anything you want. Cassandra says Grandma Wendy was mumbling through the duct tape, but they could still somewhat understand her. She says, and I quote, I mean, she was mumbling through the duct tape. You could still understand her, but at the same time, you couldn't, you know? Regardless, none of that mattered. What All that mattered is Grandma Wendy is about to give her the safe code. And once she gets those magical numbers, she runs into Grandma Wendy's closet to unlock the safe. She clicks in the safe code, enter the safe, unlocks, the door swings open, and there are just envelopes stuffed with cash. Holy shit. Grandma Wendy was not lying. She was telling Cassandra the truth. Cassandra smirks because now Cassandra and Johnny, they're about to be very, very, very rich. In the interrogation room, Cassandra will tell the two investigators that she was actually quite shocked at how much money was in Grandma's safe. How much? I go in there, checking out the stuff. I grab the book bag, and I just start stuffing the book bag with everything. You know, like there were envelopes just filled with money. There was probably like a thousand dollars that we found in that safe. That they. What did he say? Hey. Oh. Is she stupid? Nah, she gotta be a little dumb. A little really dumb. <laughs> what did she mean? There was so much. Bro, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But I thought it was like a million dollars the way she making it sound like. She talking about some envelopes and envelopes of money. Boy, what? what? Filled with money, there was probably like a thousand dollars that we found in that safe that they were just saving. A thousand dollars? A thousand dollars. In envelopes? Yes. Huh. Did you know about that money or you just found it? Cassandra starts smirking a little. And you know, it was kind of weird. Like she was kind of giving me an idea about it before. My grandma was saying, what if I just gave you a thousand dollars? Would that just make the world a better place? And I'm like, no, I don't want a thousand dollars. So she kept saying that. And then I was like, when I saw it, I was just like, wow. She actually had a thousand dollars in her safe. Like that's crazy. Like there's what the fuck? What hold on, hold on, Nuna. I was about to get mad at you a little bit. Cause I'm like, I'm like, I'm very confused as to what words is coming out of your mouth right now. I'm not gonna lie. What is she talking about? What is so her grandma was gonna give her the band? And she her grandma was gonna give it to her. What? What? Is she good? Nah, she's definitely mentally unwell on God. On God. Hold on, is this what she gonna say? She actually had a thousand dollars in her Are safe. Are you paraphrasing like, Nuna or is it she like, saying- There's envelopes just filled with money. There was probably she's envelopes. not paraphrasing. Like, that's crazy. Like there's envelopes just filled with money. There was probably about like a thousand dollars that we found in that safe. What the f 
Wow, my God, yo. She's being serious. She's actually saying this, like, word for word. There's no, like... <laughs> Phillips just filled with money. There was probably about like a thousand dollars that we found in that safe. Oh, this is that many. They were just saving. <laughs> this is so much money. <laughs> you know about that money, or you just said no? Well, my grandma. It was kind of weird. Like she was kind of giving me like an idea about it before. Like she was saying, "What if I just gave you a thousand dollars? Would that just make the world a better place?" I'm just like, "No, I don't want a thousand dollars." What? Oh my God. This was word for word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, you gotta go to jail for life on God. You just killed two people that obviously cared. Well, I don't know if the grandpa cared just yet, but I'm sure I'm gonna get some similarly like, bro, the grandpa really cared about you type story. The grandma, see like, she really cared about, yeah, yo, you're dumb, you're stupid. You're just stupid, okay? You need to go to jail for life. You might just need to die. So ridiculously dark ass eyebrows would that just make the world a better place i'm just like no i don't want you dying will make the world a better place you know? so you know she kept saying that and then like when i saw it i was just like wow she actually had a thousand dollars in her safe like that's she crazy there are a lot of moments like this in the interrogation where l story what the fuck <laughs> that story was horrible that's the type of story where if you tell your friends they look at you like and nigga where's the rest of that and where it is such a weird mixture of such an evil crime mixed with such immature almost childish quality yeah she's talking about killing her grandparents but then she's amazed that somebody has a thousand dollars in a safe which don't get me wrong is a lot of money <laughs> that's what i'm saying flee with that kind of money after a double homicide like, what you gonna do it's not with gonna that get them very far which by the way they're gonna spend it in a full week but at this point, Cassandra thinks that she is set for life practically. She's oh standing my. in front of this safe with a giant smirk on her face. She's emptying out all of the envelopes into the black backpack that they brought along. She runs back into the room where Johnny is watching over her nearly dead grandma and grandpa. They're still alive. They're still She's holding the little book bag filled with cash. Hey, I got the stuff. Johnny nods, turns to Grandpa Randall and slits his throat right next to grandma wendy what the fuck? they then drag grandma wendy into the restroom and by this point grandma wendy has been beaten within an inch of her life with the tire iron by her granddaughter but she's still alive which is crazy as cassandra puts it because she was quote beating her head with the tire iron in the interrogation room she shows the investigators how she's doing it and it's just this weird casual she's just using both of her arms to swing over she says beating her head just beating her head with it does she have a pillow over her head do you know or no. would she have a pillow around her head or something because mm -hmm. okay Cassandra says when she first attacked her grandma back in grandma's room, right when they start the killings, she wasn't feeling any sort of mercy or hesitation. She says, I start hitting my grandma and you know, Johnny's doing his thing. And you know, I stopped hearing Johnny doing whatever. And so he comes into the room and me and my grandma are in and he helps me tie up my grandma with the duct tape. Um, you know, he helps me like tie up my grandma with the duct tape and and how do you tie, how did you do that? Is it just her hands or? I got her hands, I got her whole head, and then I got her ankles. Okay, with her hands, I guess. Just behind her back. Just like, just like this? Yeah. Okay. And then what about anything on her head or neck or did you? Yeah, um, yeah, we kind of like wrapped the duct tape around her head-ish. So, and then that was it. What was that for, just? Just so then, I kept it, she kept it on. Oh, okay. I just cut it. And you said her ankles too? Mm-hmm. Cassandra and Johnny, they tie up yo, her yo, 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 her yo, arms, yo. ankles. They wrap the duct tape around her head. Just She's in. speaking like it's a Tuesday morning and she talking about the trash that she just took. Bro, I, I, she's like... There's something she's gotta be. I don't wanna I don't I don't I don't wanna just throw out terms lightly, bro. She gotta be a sociopath of some sort. But no, she apparently loved Johnny. I don't know, cuz I'm perplexed. This is perplexing and like sad. Not gonna hold you. Tie up grandma completely by her arms, ankles. They wrap the duct tape around her head just in circles. 
And after Johnny helps Cassandra tie up Wendy, Cassandra drags her into Grandpa's room. They torture, essentially torture her for the safe code. They kill Grandpa with the knife, slit his throat in front of Grandma, then drag Grandma into the restroom. And Cassandra would periodically check up on Grandma. And she noticed that Grandma Wendy, according to her beliefs, was pretending to be dead. Because she could still feel a pulse on her, but Grandma Wendy is not talking, she's not pleading, she's not breathing that loudly. She's just laying there motionless. Nigga, she's dumb. Cassandra done. thinks she's freaking faking it. She runs over to Johnny. What the heck, Johnny? She's still alive. Johnny walks into the bathroom, and according to Cassandra, he grabs the tire iron and aims for the top of Grandma Wendy's mm. spine. He slams it into the base of her neck at the top. This is a very fatal injury. A lot of the times, this can cause full body paralysis. It's very hard to survive an injury like this, especially if you don't get immediate medical attention. Cassandra said it was the last fatal blow. The whole situation was starting to freak Cassandra out, not because her boyfriend just murdered her grandparents, but she said it was kind of creepy because she was like starting to die. And I think she was scared to die. She shit herself and peed herself. <gasps> it's kind of gross. Wow, these kids are sadistic. They're fucking- And she was like pretending to be dead for a while. Like I would, you know, check up on her and I would see that she was still breathing. And I'll be like, John, what? I'm gonna have nightmares a little bit. It's okay. I usually am pretty in control of my dreams, so I'ma just, I'ma just get the blast. <laughs> if Shorty pop up in my dreams, nigga, <laughs> we good. On uh, me, we good. But bro, um, what the fuck? What the hell? Yo, she's twisted. No, 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 no. This is more than like, you need therapy, you psychiatric ward. And you need to be pumped full of like, various narcotics of the medi the medicinal kind medicinal narcotics the one that like turn you into i don't know a better person <laughs> like i would you know check up on her and i would see that she was still breathing and i'll be like johnny she's still alive what the heck and then like johnny finally like like made the like last blow and she it was it was kind of creepy because she was like scared uh -huh. To die, like, she, she shattered herself and peed herself. How did she? It was kind of gross. Johnny would grab the knife and slit Wendy's throat as well. When they were certain that both of them were dead, they cleaned themselves up, washed all the blood off their faces, changed into a fresh pair of clothes, and drove Grandpa's car to the local supermarket. Kroger. It's like Ralph's. They grabbed I know something Kroger. to eat, and they brought it back home to Cassandra's grandparents' house to eat and quote, just kind of like chill there. During interrogations, it's best for police to get answers on any questions that they might have. There's a few unanswered questions that are bothering them about this case. One being, why the hell did they find a gallon of milk in the trunk of the car when they arrested Cassandra and Johnny? Why do you just have a gallon of milk in the trunk of the car? What the hell are you doing with a gallon of milk? What are your right. plans? Right. There was a voluntary study done of people willing participants volunteering to get sprayed with pepper spray. They rated their discomfort on a pain level, zero through 10, a 9.6 to a 9.7 out of 10. Damn. But at least they were pepper sprayed. There is actually something that hurts so much more than pepper spray, statistically twice as more painful, bear spray. Which makes sense. One netizen said, pepper spray is meant to stop, maybe cause decent irritation to a human being, right. while the other one is meant to stop a freaking bear. <laughs> to give you context, an average human weighs 150 pounds and can sprint what? An average of 12 miles per hour? I can go the average bear that. weighs anywhere from 600 to 1,000 pounds and can charge on average 30 miles per hour. Yeah, that's more how fast I'll be is running. supposed to knock a half ton grizzly bear onto its butt, I mean, the effect that it's gonna have on a human, Tenfold. Redditors who have accidentally sprayed themselves with both pepper spray and bear spray said, trust me, bear spray is so much worse. <laughs> it's designed to nuke everything in a 30 foot radius without prejudice. Doesn't matter if you're a bear or not. Some said it's absolutely unbearable. It's so strong, so debilitating. <laughs> it's absolutely unbearable. Some said it's absolutely Was that unbearable. On it's so strong, so <laughs> debilitating that it can be used as a self-defense tool, I guess. But if you accidentally get it in your face, first it's the shock. 
you're disoriented. That lasts not even a full second before the excruciating, intense, impossible to deal with pain. St- you want to rip your face off. Ooh. The stinging of the eyes, the watering, the pressure in the throat. One netizen said, anything associated with mucous membranes, it feels like you're being singed with fire. Eyes, nostrils, sinuses, lips, tongue, soft palate, tonsils, all the way down your throat, even your heart. All of a sudden, it feels like it's ablaze. Like somebody threw ground up glass shards into your eyes. But the worst part is when you instinctively take a big gulp of air from the shock of the pain and it feels like the bear spray gets into your throat and the hacking and coughing is going to start to the point where you feel like you're about to throw up your insides. One person said, the pain and torture was so bad. I was so desperate for any sort of instant relief. I didn't have time to fill up the bathtub or even to hop in the shower. I dunked my head into the first body of water I could find. My toilet. Oh, it's that painful. Another netizen stated that a gunshot to their thigh was you less painful than getting shower. a face full of bear mace. A friend who witnessed someone getting sprayed said, his face looked like a giant red emoji, <laughs> like a giant red beach ball. His eyes were just these tiny black weeping slits because you can only see the eyelashes. Whoa. Damn. They said that even if you think bad. you're over the pain, after a few hours, if you think the symptoms have subsided, you're very wrong. Hours after, a singular tiny droplet of sweat drips into your eye and the pain starts all over again. And this can last for days. Mm -hmm. After impact, you might be dealing with redness, burning of the skin, temporary blindness. You will be in no state to do anything, let alone even just lay there being in pain is unbearable. Yeah. Melissa and her boyfriend are both college students, so they have to find any opportunity that they can to spend time together after a long day of classes. And that particular night, April 8th, they decide to grab some takeout. They're going to head home to Melissa's and eat together. Just days and after maybe they, they watch their favorite show or they just catch up with each other. They don't really know yet. They pull into the driveway of a very quiet neighborhood, unlock the front door of Melissa's parents' house, walk in, and they head straight for Melissa's room. So far, nothing is amiss. Nothing is out of the ordinary. They open the door to Melissa's room, flip on the bedroom light. The entire room is ransacked. It looks like a disaster zone. Everything is thrown out. The closet looks like a tornado has gone through it. All of her purses have been rummaged through as if somebody took them, turned them upside down, and just shook everything out of them onto the bed. Her jackets are thrown around. I mean, what the hell is going on? Melissa's already on the phone dialing 911 when she turns around and sees an orange mist inside the house. What the hell is going on? And then it hits. The stinging in her eyes, the overwhelming sensation overtakes her entire body. Her face feels like it's on fire, like somebody is pressing her face down onto a hibachi grill. Her eyes feel like someone is squirting a combination of lemon juice and jalapeno juice straight into them. Melissa and her boyfriend are squinting through the pain, coughing, almost gagging. And Melissa sees through the orange haze, a girl, a girl that looks familiar, but she can't really, in this moment, she can't really connect the dots in that split second. And this girl is coming at her with a baseball bat in her hands, ready to swing straight at Melissa. I'm confused. The bat smashes into Melissa's back. She tumbles over onto the ground. Not even a second later, she feels the bat crashing down onto her head. She can practically feel her skull pulsing as blood starts to flow out. And the girl is just standing there in the orange mist. And then she kicks Melissa straight in the stomach. If Melissa didn't want to throw up before, she definitely wants to throw up now. She looks over and her boyfriend is being attacked too. There are two people coming at them. One at Melissa, one at her boyfriend, going at their heads, beating them, spraying bear repellent straight into their eyes. Melissa and the girl are struggling to gain control over the bat. Melissa tries to grab it from her, but she kicks Melissa in the head. Then she tries to start stomping on Melissa's stomach. Melissa slides away from the attacker. And honestly, she's probably pissed now. She's bleeding. She's burning. She's so done with whatever is happening so she reaches up and yanks the girl with the bat by a fistful of her hair and yanks her around by her hair she grabs the bat mid-swing wrestles it out of the girl's arms and then turns her attention to the attacker hitting her boyfriend the attacker releases melissa's boyfriend and melissa hands her boyfriend the bat but the attacker lunges for it and now all four of them are tangled up in this mess yanking each other around in different directions trying to get control of this bat Melissa's boyfriend almost has it, but suddenly he lets go, lets the attackers have the bat. Instead, he grabs a glass beer bottle and threatens the attacker. Stop. Let us go. The attacker responds, I will never let you go. 
with nothing to lose, considering the severity of the situation, Melissa's boyfriend brings the beer bottle up and slams it down onto the attacker's head, shattering it. For a second, it feels like there's a power shift, but the attacker is eerily calm. He just had a beer bottle shatter on his head. Right. He's staring at Melissa and her boyfriend, but he's talking to the girl that he came with, the girl that attacked Melissa. Go get the hammer. The fight continues and only stops when the door opens and Melissa's mom walks in and Melissa starts screaming, they're trying to kill me, they're trying to kill me, help mom, please, they're gonna kill me. The two attackers run off, leaving Melissa covered in blood. She would need seven stitches, seven staples to close the wound on her head. She had welts all over her body from the bat and her boyfriend has injuries all over as well with a badly chipped tooth. I mean, the unsettling part of all of this was it was only Melissa's second time meeting her brother's girlfriend and she attacked her with a bat. And it was kind of freaky because whenever her brother's girlfriend Cassandra hit her, there was something in her face that just appeared so calm. And as for the other attacker, Melissa didn't even recognize him anymore. Her brother, Johnny. What the fuck? She just remembered them fleeing, running out of the house. And that girlfriend, Cassandra, was wearing a shirt that read, good vibes only. Do you think you can pinpoint when a plan I think I got a shirt that say that. I got to throw it away. Damn. I like that shirt. <laughs> Do you think you can pinpoint when a plan starts falling apart? Because for Cassandra and Johnny, it's now. They're both wanting to pour milk straight into their eyeballs. They're coughing up a storm, driving off from Johnny's family house. I mean, the original plan was to get Johnny's family one by one. They would, quote, wait for each of them to get home and knock them out one by one, a.k.a. kill them one by one. But obviously... That didn't happen. So they steal Melissa's car and they're fleeing the scene. And it's Cassandra's second time meeting Johnny's sister, which is kind of a bummer to her because it doesn't seem like they're going to be getting along anytime soon. So truly, nothing is going I, according to her. I wonder why. I wonder why. Her because it doesn't seem like they're going to be getting along anytime soon. Jesus so truly, brother. nothing is going according to plan. Wait, so they are getting hit by the bear man okay i imagine that i thought i imagine they thought it was like pepper spray so pepper spray as long as you're not in a windy area it comes out in a consistent stream because mm -hmm. you're trying to get an attacker you don't want to get any witnesses or people on the side passerby. you don't want to yeah, get yeah. Yeah. but with bear spray it's very hard to yeah. estimate where a bear is going to attack so it's a mist it's yeah. a fog so they're getting hit too. They're covered. Johnny is covered in bear mace and it's stinging his entire body. He's going to get Cassandra to go buy a gallon of milk so that he can go take a, quote, milk shower to ease the stinging. Does that work? But the biggest downfall of this plan, the single biggest mistake is they left their original car that they had driven to Johnny's house. During the attack, the car keys had fallen out. They were misplaced. And as they're leaving in that rush... That's something that they don't have time for. They don't have time to look for the damn keys. They just took whatever they could find, which was Melissa's car keys. They flee in Johnny's sister's car and they just leave Grandpa Randall's car parked oh, at the house. Oh, you dummy. When Johnny's mom calls the police, they come to take their statements. They run the plates on the car, Randall Bjorch, and which is interesting. They go to the crib. There was a but... wellness check request out for him and his wife, Wendy. About a week ago, April 2nd, 2017, relatives of Wendy's had called the police station requesting a wellness check, stating that their 63-year-old sister and her husband, Randall and Wendy, were not picking up their phones. They were sending text messages, but it just didn't sound like them. It was very odd. They suspected that somebody else was impersonating them and sending text messages from Wendy's phone. The police had gone to their house, but because they don't really have a special reason to break in to perform the rest of the wellness check, this is the first call. The last time the family heard from them was a day ago. They just leave. But now, now they have a very, very good reason. Mm -hmm. They're going to force their way into Cassandra's grandparents' home. Because this, Back this in car now where it's supposed room, to be Cassandra it. Cassandra tells the two detectives that truly nothing, nothing is going according to plan now. What was the plan? Okay, so the plan was that we were both gonna get both of our families. Stupid plan. I'm already I'm already knowing it's gonna be a stupid. I'm calling in from here. Pre stupid ass naive. I'm a child really in my head plan on God. If she thought a thousand dollars was gonna be enough for her to survive for a couple years, then this plan is off rip. Gonna be extremely dumb. Dumb, I tell you. 
as a as a I can't even say horses. Horses probably could come up with a better plan. Matter of fact, I know a horse. Just watch Tangled. I know. I'm late to hell. Maximus. Maximus probably has better plans than this dumbass human. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so the plan was that we were both gonna get both of our families. Lame. But first we got our grandparents, and that's when we went over to Johnny's house, and we attacked his sister and her like, boyfriend because why? he wanted to kill his family too. Why? But it didn't work out at all, it just went downhill from there. Yeah, so the reason why we stayed in town was because the plan was we were gonna give both of our families. You dead ass saying that's this? Why... Oh, hold on, what? Okay, so... The plan was that we were both going to get both of our families. But first we got my grandparents. Then that's why we went over to Johnny's house. And we attacked his sister and her boyfriend. Girl, you're so stupid. Were, he wanted to kill his family. Okay. So that's like, we stayed in town for a couple days. Well, the plan was, why her voice sound like that? It's like a constant annoying high-ass pitch. That shit kind of like blowing me. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Well, the plan, like, shut up, or actually snitch on yourself, then shut up. To kill his family. Mm. Okay. So that's like we stayed in town for a couple days because you know we wanted to get some money, we wanted to get ready to leave, and then that plan just going over to his house kind of just like it didn't work out at all. It it just went it went downhill from there. But how did the plan even start? Who started it? Right. And this I is need answers. To Cassandra because Johnny does not want to talk to the police. Cassandra and Johnny were at the park. This is before they killed so anybody. Cassandra just before snitching? they killed Cassandra's <laughs> grandparents, before they attacked Johnny's sister and her boyfriend. Cassandra had run away from home and they were living in Johnny's car. Uh -huh. Well, Cassandra says that she didn't run away. She said she was kicked out. I don't know how much of that I believe, but her version of events goes. I was out chilling with Johnny and my other friends. Chilling with Johnny. But then Johnny. she came home from curfew. Grandma's asleep. Grandma wakes up hearing Cassandra come in and she storms out of her room and just starts losing it on Cassandra. And Cassandra says, my grandma just got really mad at me saying things like, oh, you know, if you don't like it here, we're just gonna find somewhere else for you to stay. She just said that out of the blue. Liar. Like we just, she got mad for some reason. And so I was just like, if you're gonna find another place for me to stay, I'm just gonna leave. I'm just gonna find somewhere else to go. And she kept bringing up stuff about my mom. And you know, she kept saying things like, I could easily send you back to your mom's house. I don't know. It just got to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore. Oh yeah. Cassandra really does not like the alleged threat of being sent back to her mom's house. Now, side note, we don't know if this is even what Grandma Wendy said to her. I highly personally doubt it. With everything I could find about Grandma she Wendy, like it feels like she wanted to protect Cassandra at all costs yeah. against whatever she had been experiencing back at her mom's. About Boy, I feel like Grandma Wendy probably really, really cared about Cassandra. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what, like, that's her name, right? Cassandra? At all costs. Yeah. Against whatever she had been experiencing back at her mom's. These niggas suck. About a year and a half before Cassandra and Johnny's plan, Cassandra Cassandra's and Johnny grandparents suck, filed for, for emergency custody over Cassandra from their own daughter, Cassandra's mom. Oh. From the records that I could find and the grandparents' neighbors' statements to the police, allegedly, Cassandra was potentially being abused by her stepdad and her mom was allegedly not doing anything about it a neighbor said this all started and came up maybe a year and a half ago when um i just let wendy tell me and she wanted to talk about things wendy and randall had found out about cassie being sexually abused by her stepdad sean and so at that point they filed for emergency custody because amanda cassandra's mom wasn't doing anything about it and then over the past i'll say um Three weeks, I was over at their house and Wendy had told me that Sean and Amanda were being investigated and they had bought all new computers and phone and devices so that they didn't leave any evidence behind, but that Cassandra had written a bunch of information down, a bunch of journaling information. And she said, Wendy told me, what I thought happened in my head was nothing compared to what actually happened. And I just never really, I didn't ask questions. Beyond that, I didn't want Wendy to talk about it unless she wanted to. I kind of felt like it was maybe more of a um, CP thing. I don't know. It was happening under everybody's nose. And once Wendy found out, she filed for custody for Cassandra. Then there were stories that Cassandra had to take out a restraining order against her stepdad because he starts stalking her at school and, quote, checking her out of her classes. Cassandra said that she had to start online school because her stepdad would go through the classes 
literally prowl through the campus trying to find her and check her out where where is the security which is interesting that cassandra has this insanely tense painful relationship with her mom and her stepdad but she kills the two people in the world that tried to help her and right. protect her from them her no grandparents sense. Actually, the police no had sense. gone through Wendy and Randall's house and they saw that the entire place filled with pictures of Cassandra. Clearly, they love her. The investigators, of course, they pick up on that and they ask Cassandra, was your mom part of the plan? AKA, were you going to kill your mom next if we hadn't caught you? Was your mom part of the plan? What's she say? Of killing them? Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, but I wanted to. We did discuss it, but Johnny was like, we can't waste our time on them. And I was like, okay, but I wanted to. Johnny, what? Johnny kind of told you not to. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what's going on with my parents, you know? Like, I mean, we drove over their house the other day. They have new cars, you know? I don't know what guns they have in their house, you know? I don't really... She says you know a lot, by the way. So she's not shaking say, up like, at all right now. No. She has no, like, emotional problems. She's... Just calm, collected. She keeps saying, you know, as if this is a very normal reaction. What I'm saying. Very uh, normal response. I used a She's almost trying to get the detectives to nod and agree with her. Like, yeah, of course we know. But no, Cassandra, we don't know. We don't know shit. I don't really know what's going on in my parents' thing. house, so. Yeah. You didn't know what you would have been met with. Is that what you're saying? Whereas your grandparents, you knew it was kind of a safe bet to kill them, correct? Exactly. Because she hadn't been at her mom's house in a while. She didn't know where they had their weapons. She didn't know if they had new guns, yeah. what kind of cars they drove. It was very hard to, I guess, stalk them. Back to the original plan, though. Cassandra I... said that she came home after hanging out with her friends. Her grandma starts randomly arguing with her, fighting her. And it's after this argument with grandma, she just leaves, goes to stay with Johnny in his car. They're sleeping in there, just driving from one place to another. And she said, we're just all over the place, really. Just trying to find something to do. Just keep, you know, having something to do. We didn't want to just sit around and do nothing. We would find people to chill with, go to the mall or something. They end up at the park where they're sitting, staring up at the trees. And according to Cassandra, Johnny turns to her. Are you afraid? What? Are you afraid to die? No, are you? No. You know we could run away together. Wouldn't that just be the dream? I guess it would be, Johnny. Would you like to kill your grandparents? What? Why? I don't know. I mean, because of everything. Cassandra said that she understood. Johnny knew everything about her situation with her family, everything that she had gone through, and all she wanted to do was get away from everything, move on with her life, and things with her grandparents had gotten so bad recently. She had broken her grandfather's ribs. She was on probation for assaulting her grandparents. I mean, so much has happened, which is why at the park, the two decide to start over with their lives, start fresh, get away from everyone and everything. And the few problems that they were facing were, one, Johnny's ex-wife. Cassandra said he got married to like this crazy bitch, and then now she's like saying that I'm. Oh, oh, oh! She, the the ex-wife is the crazy one. Oh, wow! Yeah, that makes that makes so much sense. The ex-wife is just tweaking, you know. <laughs> Actually, the ex-wife might be a little crazy for even marrying Johnny. Boy, that nigga Johnny said, "Shouldn't we just kill your grand?" <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> if I'm if I'm sane and I'm Cassandra, I'm looking at that nigga like, what are you, what did you just say? Hell no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, um, 911? <laughs> Hell nah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Which one was it? FBI, open up! Oh, God. She said he got married to like this crazy bitch, and then now she's like saying that I'm stalking her when I've only met the girl like twice. But thankfully, she lives out of state, so they don't really have to deal with her anymore. Not that there was anything to deal with to begin with. It seems like Johnny's wife had no care for either of them. <laughs> but other than that, their only other problem was they need money and they need their family members. Dang, Johnny's ex-wife is trying to like <laughs> really move on from her back. <laughs> nah, I feel it though. She's not even trying to think about that lame ass nigga and his crazy new girl. Nah, I feel it. I feel her. But other than that, their only other problem was they need money and they need their family members dead. The reason for needing them dead is very unclear because I imagine they could have gotten the money without killing them. Right. But it does appear that they didn't like the fact that their parents or their families did not like them being together. 
Which, side note, the reason they need the money is so that they can move to Pensacola, Florida and start a new life. What the hell is Which is, is about a five hour, 32 minute drive from Atlanta, Georgia. And that's not a far distance to flee after a double homicide. Mm -mm. But Cassandra says, <laughs> Pensacola, it's just Florida. Somewhere where we could escape reality. In Pensacola. The detectives ask, escape reality or kill grandma? Cassandra responds, no, 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 not kill them. Just kind of like escape from everything, you know, just start my life. I don't know. Like, I just wanted to move on from everything. Just my family. Girls, slow down with all them delusions, please. No, 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 not kill them. Just kind of like escape from everything, you know, just start my life. I don't know. Like, I just wanted to move on from everything. Just my family. I couldn't be around them anymore just because everything we've all been through. It's just so much betrayal. It's kind of just all I've been wanting to do for well, well, such well, a long time. Well, like just just escape reality or kill grandma and grandma? Well, no, 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 not kill them. Oh, no, 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 no. Start my life. Start you know, my like, life. So they're not that smart either. They don't have some crazy <laughs> plans. No. Just all vibes. <laughs> Yo, that's facts though. On me, that's facts. They not that smart whatsoever. Tell me hell. So they're not that smart either. They don't have some crazy plans. Yo, no. husband Just funny as shit. All vibes. Funny. All vibes. Oh. All super gluing doors. A thousand dollars to flee a double homicide. All oh, vibes. Yeah, there's super not even glue. like crazy motive. Just, no. just evil. Just plain evil. They solidified it in their minds. This is what they want to do how they want to go about it. It's their master plan. They start thinking it actually might be simpler than we originally thought. Everything they could possibly need is already in Johnny's car. Cassandra would poke fun at him. It's like a Mary Poppins car. So much stuff in there. You think surely he's not going to have a tire iron in there. And then he does. So the plan is settled. <laughs> Kill anyone like, who stands in their way of being no together. Joke. Both their families no hate joke. them dating. And for that, they would have to die. The plan is kill Cassandra's grandparents, then Johnny's entire family, his mom, his two sisters, they all need to die. Five people are on their little hit list so that they can run off and be together and start a fresh life. They'd only been dating for two months at this point. Like, what the hell is going wow. on, bruh? Romeo and Juliet is probably one of the most well-known stories in the world. Boy loves girl, girl loves boy, their love is forbidden. No one else believes they should be together except- Boy, I always thought it was Reginald and Jermina. Never, I'm sorry. Girl, girl loves boy, their love is forbidden. No one else believes they should be together except them. It's the two of them against the world and they'll do anything to stay together. It's quite dramatic too. They want to stay together even if blood is shed, even if their own blood is shed, even if that means Means they need to die in order to be together right right back right. in the interrogation room the detectives have more questions there is a week-long gap between the time that they murder cassandra's grandparents in cold blood and when they attack johnny's sister and her boyfriend the investigators want to know exactly what they did in that week is this part of the plan to wait a week did you schedule that in what were you spending the week doing preparing for the next attack is that it cassandra said they didn't really have a plan they were just taking it quote day by day so for a week they just stayed in her grandparents' home. They slept, ate, ordered Chinese takeout, went to Steak and Shake, blew $200 at Zoomies, the skateboard clothing store, went on shopping sprees, spent the entire $1,000 they just got from the safe, These but also spent every last dime in grandma's bank account, did drugs, filmed intimate videos on grandma's phone in the house with their dead bodies laying upstairs. What? They brought all their sheets and blankets downstairs into the living room because they didn't want to sleep upstairs with the dead bodies. They spent a week in that house. Not with fleeing. Them. No. That's so weird. I, I don't know. Is that like more scary or it's less scary? Because that's they're not trying to get scarier. away, I guess. They're just Boy, hanging out. That's just terrifying. There's dead bodies upstairs and they're downstairs doing the Macarena, chilling. Having a good old happy vibe, smoking a blunt. Um, it'd be like that's it's scary because it goes against the grain of what they would typically do. You know what I'm saying? Or what someone in that situation would typically do, like a like a psychopath. I feel like most folks, if they're willing to kill somebody that they love, they would flee, not stay in the same house while there's a dead body de while there is your victim's dead body decomposing upstairs. That's crazy as shit. 
they need to go to jail. Well, they're already going to jail, but they need to go to an insane ward. Weird. I, I don't know. Is that like more scary or it's less scary? Because it's they're not scary. trying to get it's away, I guess. More scary. They're just hanging out there like they don't care or not afraid about the consequences. Right. I think that's more scary. Yeah. They're also not emotionally disturbed right. by that's... their actions if they're able to stay in that house. Yeah. There's nothing. Mm. And it's not wow. even strangers. I think it would be, I don't think it's understandable, but I think it would make a little bit more sense in most people's heads. Okay, if they're strangers, maybe they just killed them for a place to stay. Yeah. And which one is week, not acceptable, but. Yeah, and no, one week no. is a long time and they didn't even have a moment of realization. They blew through and a the band in a week. Is bad. The caulk and the bleach is not going to fix it. Mm. So it's a constant reminder of their actions, the scent. Yeah. Now, sometimes in interrogations, the detectives will ask suspects questions, questions that they know the suspect are going to lie in the answer. But they ask it anyway, because the point of the question is not to learn the truth. See it's what they to would catch do. the suspect in the lie. Yeah. The investigators are curious. Did you call some people and say, hey, if you want to come over, not for a party or anything, but just like I got some money, grandparents are out of town, do you want to come over? Cassandra says, nope. I would just tell people like, hey, you know, like, I have a free crib, but I wouldn't have people come over. If you guys are trying to chill, I'll come meet up with you. I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't let them go to the house. Besides, Cassandra tells the two officers she only has two friends because, quote, I don't like chilling with a lot of people because they don't really trust a lot of people. Regardless, Cassandra <laughs> tells them. Yeah, because you murdering your grandparents in your off time, nigga. I wouldn't want to hang around your ass either the fuck like yo yo i hate that there's no sense of reality in her statements bro so she doesn't understand that she's like insane and so wrong so wrong because they don't really trust a lot of people right right regardless cassandra tells the officers that they would just go and meet up with their few friends outside of the house her and johnny agreed that having someone over at the house was a big quote no no the investigators are nodding because yeah i mean that makes sense it makes a lot of sense but I guess. the detective brings out his phone and starts playing cassandra a video come take a look at that cassandra's body tenses she leans forward her eyebrows are all scrunched together she's staring at his phone that's you and him right cassandra doesn't speak she just gives a short nod. That's you and Johnny at your grandparents' house? She doesn't respond. He replays the video and she just leans down further, sticking her head closer to the phone. Sure looks like it, like the living room at your grandparents' house. Cassandra's voice is briefly, oddly robotic. How could that be possible? Who's taken that video? She starts aggressively shaking her head. No, that, that couldn't be at my grandparents' house. There was no one at my grandparents' house. So that couldn't have been at my grandparents' house. Ooh, yeah, confront The detective her. is no longer playing around with Cassandra. They're no longer burger-eating buddies. He points to his phone. Well, I didn't shit that out. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What? Who? I mean, it sounds like. Wait, let me watch it again. I gotta... That must have been before. There was no one at my grandparents' house, so that could have been at my grandparents' house. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't ship it. <laughs> he really oh, says that. Oh, at my grandparents' house, so that could have been at my grandparents' house. Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't shit this out. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Who, you know what I'm saying? Cassandra tries to look the detectives in the eyes to show them that she's being honest. But one mistake, the other detective points out. Well, it couldn't be before because your grandparents don't like Johnny and he wasn't at your house much. He didn't go to my house at all. I, I mean, Cassandra Wait, catches her second mistake. But your grandparents didn't like Johnny, so why won't we see at your house much? Like, he didn't go to my house at all. Like, I mean. I mean. <laughs> your house much. Like, he didn't go to my house. Well, he didn't go to my house at all. Like, bro, I, I, I don't like her voice. Steak. I'm sorry. But your grandparents didn't like Johnny, so why won't we see at your house much? Like, yeah, he didn't go, go to my, my house, house at all. Well. Like, I mean. I mean, that couldn't have been at my house. That had to be somebody else's house because we had no one at my house. It was just me and Johnny. She's staring at the detectives through her lashes. Her eyebrows are raised. Her eyes are big as if she's trying to convince them. But what is she trying to convince them of? They have the video in question. Right. Like, that could have been at my house. That could have been at my house. Been oh, at someone else's house. Oh, 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 we had no one at my house. It was just me and Johnny. Liar! I mean, you've been honest with me. I just, I saw that and it... Obviously, I've been at your grandparents' house. You know what your grandparents' house looks like. And just even the stuff said almost seems after the fact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. 
The video in question shows Cassandra sitting cross-legged on the living room floor of her grandparents' house. She is in the middle of rolling a joint. Johnny is right next to her, leaning in. His gaze is just transfixed on her, like he can only see her in the entire room. It honestly might have been cute, or one of those couple videos, oh my god, look at the way he looks at if her. If there wasn't, a, like, two dead bodies upstairs, sorry, I just have to point it out, but you probably gonna say that it's too, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Room. It honestly might have sorry, been cute, Luna. or one of those couple videos, oh my god, look at the way he looks at her, but of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. Right. He looks at her with puppy dog eyes, does not take his eyes off her face. Even when she breaks eye contact which is the majority of the video so that she can continue rolling her joint johnny is just staring people have a lot to say about you like you i don't listen to those people though like i love you what? you kick ass the clip cuts people have to say about you like you know, i don't listen to who's people, recording like, i love you wait people have to say about you like you know, i don't listen to people like i love you you kick ass. It's a super short clip, or at least the one that was made public was. But none of the video content is actually that important, other than the fact that Johnny and Cassandra are rolling a joint in her dead grandparents' house. This video is taken after their murder, and someone else is taking the video. Yeah, baby. Someone else had been at that crime scene. Who? A Do few days after Cassandra's grandparents' murders, one of Cassandra's best friends receives a Snapchat from her, asking her to come over. Hey, my grandparents are out of town. They went to Florida for a few days. I've got an open crib. Plus, they left me like a thousand dollars. You want to come over? Transla translation. I killed my grandparents. Stole a thousand dollars. I've got an open crib. Plus, they left me like a thousand dollars. You want to come over? That's not happening. First of all, it's 8.30 p.m. She can't just go over. She's already laying in bed. She's 17. Her mom's never going to agree to it. But more than that, something in her gut is telling her not to accept this Smart. invitation. Smart. Do not go to Cassandra's house. The whole situation is just so weird. It didn't make sense. Why, Why would your grandparents people? leave her that kind of money? They're also not the type of people to just randomly pack up and go on vacation, especially not now when Cassandra is going through a lot, running away, hanging out with Johnny, whom they hate. The investigators, they know this already. They've interviewed all of Cassandra's friends, and by some ironic miracle, almost every single person Cassandra invited over for a massive rager at the house after her grandparents' murder rejected the invitation. Really? In the interrogation room, the investigators break her down. We got a problem, man. As you know, I'm a cool dude. So is she. The detectives are talking to Cassandra. Right, right, right. I've been doing this a lot longer than you've been alive, okay? Oh, so shit. I'm not a bullshitter. Oh. I don't know what those DA investigators, what type of, you know, they are. How many times they talk to you. But I'm cool as shit with you as long as you're cool as shit with me. They're really... <laughs> I, I want to hear what these investigators saying. I want to hear them say that. I'm like a lot because I'm already, I'm kind of giggling. I'm kind of giggling. I'm cool as shit with you. You cool as shit with me, capper. Sometimes they talk to you, but I'm cool as shit with you <laughs> as long as you're cool as shit with me. They're really trying to play Pick into up the this vernacular. They sat there and ate McDonald's with her. Seriously. Mm. Do you think it's working though for, for yes. Cassandra? Oh, it looks like it is. So she actually wants that kind of relationship she it's almost very bizarre the way she's so callously talking about her grandparents she's murder almost bragging is so cold like... you wouldn't even expect that from a full-grown adult of how heinous and evil it is mm -hmm. but her yearning and desire for the detectives to like her is almost childlike yeah mm -hmm. when children will say anything to try and fit in yeah, yeah. she's like Desiring wow. acceptance. Bizarre. The mixture of that, something so evil, and then. The Bro, it's just the juxtaposition of her behavior combined with her words is throwing me off, also. She's saying some crazy shit, but her mannerisms is that of somebody who just wants to hang out with the cool kids or just make friends. You know what I'm saying? I am. That is what is alerting me to the fact that mentally, her mental age gotta be very, very low. Very low. And there's gotta be something wrong with her, bro. Wow. It's very bizarre. I'm sorry. The mixture sorry, of that, that's just what something is. so evil, and then this very bizarre childlike quality is unsettling. Yeah, yeah. He says, I'm this cool as shit with you as long as you're cool as shit with me. But once lying and stuff like that starts, I've got a problem. I believe that people were at that house, okay? Ooh. Unfortunately, you're in this. There's no saving face right now. I'll be honest with you, dude. We heard a conversation that took place in there where somebody was 
about the smell and Johnny's like, no dude, it's just sewage. There's a sewage problem upstairs. As you know, I'm a cool dude. So is she, okay? I've been doing this. Yo, he long. did it saying this shit. I'm a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, your hairline looking kind of crazy though. Hey, all respect to you because you're doing your job. Strong hairline, patriotic hairline. <laughs> so is she, okay? I've been doing this longer than you've been alive, okay? I'm cool as shit with you if you're cool as shit with me. But once lying and stuff like that starts, I have a problem. I believe that there were people at that house, okay? <laughs> It was. It was probably only sunshine. I, I mean, I just want no if or anything left like that. Unfortunately, you're you're in this, okay? There's no, you know, there's no saving face right now. Cassandra would never admit to this, but it was later confirmed by the people that were over because she invited a bunch of people over. Only two people came, her drug dealers. So the drug dealers came and they took videos of them rolling a joint. Yes. Now, none of them knew that her dead grandparents were upstairs, but they could smell something disgusting in there. Cassandra and Johnny tried to play it off as a sewage issue that they couldn't flush the toilet and Johnny took a big poo and tried to flush. It didn't flush, so it had just been sitting there for days. Now you're saying it smells like shit. What did it I mean? I didn't think anything of it because... Did you ever ask him, like, why does it... I did, and Johnny said that it was just because he hadn't flushed the toilet. During the interrogation, Cassandra states that Johnny just starts randomly telling her to pour bleach all over her grandparents' bodies to help with the smell, and he starts randomly gluing the door shut inside the house. She said, he went in my garage and found, I don't know what it's called, like the, I don't know, the caulk, yeah, and then glued the doors. She tells the officer she didn't know what the point was. He didn't tell her why he was doing it. He just grabbed it and started doing it, and she was, quote, just like, yeah, okay, you got it, and just watched him. But later, she would admit that she invited people over, they wanted to throw a party, and in order to do that, she would have to pour bleach on her grandparents' body to hide their decomposing smell, and Johnny caulked the doors shut so that they could have people over. And then you guys went back to the house, mm -hmm. and then did you do anything to the doors? Or... Johnny did. He glued the doors. Okay. He went to the gr my garage and found the um, what's it called? The... I don't know. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, he did that. Okay. And was it me? The point of that is what? Just. He just did that. He just decided to do that. He didn't tell me. I just watched him. And I was just like, okay. Okay. Like you got it. Mm. Just to give you a recap, they kill her grandparents, attack Johnny's family, get sprayed with bear mace. Johnny's mom calls the police, and they're on the run. Jason opens the door to his apartment, and he's face to face with Johnny and a girl named Cassandra, shirtless Johnny. Johnny's eyes are bloodshot. It looks like he'd been crying. Well, no, it looks worse than that. There's just red marks all over his face and body. Do you mind if we come in, Jason? My mom and I fought again. She pepper sprayed me. Jason lets Johnny and his girlfriend Cassandra in. Jason had been friends with Johnny since they were in middle school, but it was a little strange. He was just showing up unannounced. They hadn't really been close since like, middle who school. The hell, Jason? They naturally grew apart. <laughs> Jason stayed with their original group of friends and Johnny started hanging out with this different group doing drugs. They never really had like this big fight or anything, but they just didn't fit together anymore. It's time. But now Johnny has showed up explaining to Jason that he got into this huge fight with his mom and he cannot think of anywhere else to go. This was the first place that popped up into his mind. He lets them in and they end up spending the night. The next morning, it does kind of feel like they're all back in middle school again. Johnny's talking to Jason's mom while she's preparing breakfast for everybody. They've always had quite a close relationship. Johnny's cracking jokes with Jason. Jason's drinking coffee on the balcony. He goes out to walk the dog, and that's when he starts noticing something's not right. Parked directly in front of their apartment unit, and Jason knows just about every car in this parking lot. There is a new car. But the plates are temporary, meaning a neighbor did not just buy it or lease the car. If that was the only odd thing, though, it wouldn't be that alarming. However, the car is suspiciously parked directly in front of Jason's unit, practically staring into the ground floor windows. And it happens to be a fully blacked out suburban SUV. It's strange, what? but what is Jason going to do about it? He just takes a mental note of, oh, that's a little bit strange, but it's not something that he can really investigate. The plot is getting Eventually, even more he makes robusty. his way back into his room when all of a sudden it's a voice booming into the unit. It feels like it's coming from the sky itself. 
Unit 184, Johnny Ryder, come outside. Like a megaphone? A megaphone. Like, is that the Jason's police? Like, what the hell is going on? Is that the police? Then it happens again. Unit 184, Johnny Ryder, come outside. It is 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Is Jason asleep right now? Is he dreaming? Jason walks out into the living room and he looks down and there are red dots on his body and on the walls. Wait, on Jason's body? Yes. Because usually they'll cover the whole like lasers. snipers, lasers, like beams. This is real. Like very, sniper very beams. real. He's got to get his sister and mom out of here. He has no idea what's going on, but he knows that they got to leave. Right. As they're about to step out, he sees from the corner of his eye, Johnny grabbing a knife from their kitchen and walking straight towards Jason and his family. What the hell is he about to do? Is he about to stab them? Johnny walks straight up to their faces, leans in closer and closer, and then gives Jason a hug. I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry for everything. I love you. I wish I didn't bring this onto you and your family. He drops the knife, leans over, and says the same thing to Jason's sister and gives her a hug. And with that, Johnny lets them walk out of the unit. Walk straight into a swarm of SWAT teams that circle them. Jason said it felt like he was walking into basically every cop in the county. He found out after leaving his apartment that his childhood best friend had tried to kill his sister and her boyfriend and that he and his girlfriend had murdered both of her grandparents. And now with Jason and his family gone, the two of them are trapped inside of this apartment unit. With SWAT teams outside, police shouting their names, threatening to break in. They're cornered. If they're going to go out, they're going to be arrested. If they stay in, how long is that going to last? Right. They can't just sit there like ducks waiting to be arrested. So they, what the hell are they supposed to do? Wait, but Johnny let I would them say go. that the most popular group within the police force are the canine dogs. Mm. But second to them, also with four legs, are likely the explosive ordnance disposal devices. Oh. They're basically robocops. They're robots that specialize in going into oh, dangerous I've crime scenes these. to figure out what's going on. They're programmed to neutralize explosive devices. Yeah. And they most commonly are named Spot and Roscoe, like dogs. Hmm. They can see, hear, basically sense things around them and respond accordingly. But their most valuable feature is their expendability. They're completely yeah. disposable. Yeah, yeah. What do they look like? Until they gain like, sentience. Like, do they look like a dog or? It looks <laughs> like a Yo, steamer. Husband a asking steamer. important questions. Mm. Like a tripod. Mm. And it's all controlled by the SWAT team from a remote controlled joystick. Yeah. This is what they send into Jason's apartment. The cops are not taking any risks on this one. They As both they know should. Cassandra and Johnny are armed As and dangerous. They, they can't risk sending in humans or their dogs. Yeah. This is the perfect situation to test out the robo dog. This makes sense. They send it in. They start maneuvering through Jason's house. They're spinning. The camera is rotating as it advances, looking for clues on where they are. Are they planning something? Are they planning on bombing? someone they don't know anything on the screen that displays the camera feed the authorities watch as the robot moves through the empty apartment and advances down the hall and comes towards a door and immediately they are alarmed because there is a stain on the outside of the door and it looks like blood johnny cassie say something there's a microphone on it radio silence nothing johnny cassie They have to be in there. The officers have no idea what they're about to walk into. Did one of them turn on the other? Did they harm each other? Did they harm themselves? What are they doing in there? They use the robot to swing open the door and slumped on the tile floor of the restroom in each other's arms, soaked in a growing pool of blood, are the bodies of Cassandra and Johnny. What the fuck? They had tried to self-exit together. Authorities mm. rush in and rush them to the hospital. A lot of netizens liken Cassandra and Johnny to be a sick Romeo and Juliet couple. Not so much objectively, but... Wait, more like, what happened to Bonnie and Clyde? Did that ending go well, too, or what? Boy, these niggas is, like, they really think they in a story of some sort. Like, like this not even real life. How, how did such a thought process even come to be, though, bruh? I'm still kind of confused on that, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of netizens liken Cassandra and Johnny to be a sick Romeo and Juliet couple. Not so much objectively, but maybe the narrative that they probably felt themselves. Yeah. Nobody wants to see us together, so we have to kill them all. Our love is stronger than all. We will die without each other. That's, that's what she said? That's what netizens feel like they felt. Yeah. But Cassandra would later tell the investigators, 
at the park when they were planning these mass murders, serial killings, really. Cassandra claims Johnny told her, let's be Bonnie and Clyde. He said that to you? Yeah, I was like, okay. An interesting part of this interrogation is the detectives ask if she's seen the movies and she shakes her head no. Of course. You have or you haven't seen the movies? Of course I have. While shaking her head? Yeah, aggressively shaking her head no. That's the, weird. The other detective says, oh, I'm just saying, I'm 29 and I haven't seen the movies. Yeah, my mom was really into old movies, so when I was a child, I used to watch a lot of oldies. And he was like, let's be Bonnie and Clyde. Hmm. You said that? Yeah. I was like, okay. That's, when I, that's what I first said when, because uh, I'm the one that got called out to the scene initially, and that's the first thing that came out of my mouth. So. Bonnie and Clyde. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the movies? Of course. You have or you haven't? Yes, of course I have. Of course. Oh, of course. Too young, I didn't I'm think. I'm 20. Ooh, what the? Whoa. <laughs> she, she's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, ma'am, you're, you're conflicting. You have or you haven't? Yes, of course I have. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Too young, I didn't I'm think. I'm 29 and I haven't. Thank you. Yeah, my mom was really into like old movies, so okay. as I was a child, I used to watch like Liar! old movies. <laughs> Interesting. Oh Regardless, <laughs> some netizens think they're sick wannabe versions of Romeo and Juliet. They themselves think they're sick wannabe versions of Bonnie and Clyde. And it all hinges, both couples, Romeo and Juliet, Bonnie and Clyde, hinges on the fact that they are loyal to nobody but each other. Yeah. During the interrogations, both Johnny and Cassandra seem to be very concerned about each other whenever they're brought up. During Cassandra's questioning, she's asked about how she feels about Johnny now, after they killed together, and she says, I still have feelings for him. I care about him. I guess I'm going to ask a corny question. Is it love? Yeah. I talked to Johnny a couple days ago, and Cassandra perks up. She looks concerned. She looks stressed. Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He sends his regards and all that stuff. Is he like, is he doing okay? No, he's fine. He's actually better off than you, you know? His cuts weren't that deep or anything. Really? I could have sworn he did worse than me. Because I remember when we were in the bathroom, he just kept going and I kept telling him to stop. Yeah, maybe just tougher skin. I don't really know. Huh. Is he like, is he doing okay? Is he no, he's fine. Okay. Yeah, he's, he actually is better off than you. You know, they weren't, weren't that deep or anything. So he did. He didn't. Really? Mm hmm Man, I could have sworn he did worse than me because I remember when we were in the bathroom because he did it with mm -hmm. me too. He kept going and I kept telling him to stop. So. Yeah, his maybe this tougher skin. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. The police asked Johnny about his feelings towards Cassandra. Is that your girlfriend Cassie or is it just a friend or what? Is she okay? Yeah, no, 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 she's fine. Johnny sounds genuinely relieved. How long have you guys been dating? A lifetime, it feels like. I can't live without Cassie. Like, I don't know why I never felt this about any other girl. They'd only been dating a few weeks like, before they decided bro, to kill everyone in their you lives. Got but this is how they talk about each other. You tweaking for real. Which, side note, Cassandra's interrogation video has gone viral for how absurd her behavior is. In the sense that she's not outright acting crazy in the video per se, but in the fact that she's oddly calm yeah, and she has these moments the where her mask drops and she just seems very unhinged. It's terrifying to a lot of people. From the get-go, there's this really uncomfortable moment in the interrogation room where one of the detectives, there's two in the room with her, one of them is trying to rip off her zip ties. Since she's in cast, they can't handcuff her. They're trying to use scissors to get her zip ties off and maneuver between her giant cast. And he tells her he's trying to get the scissors away from her face so he doesn't accidentally. And she finishes his sentence. Stab me. You are doing all right eating? Uh-huh. I was getting there. Mm-hmm. Just don't want to freaking get you. You get them? Yeah, I mean, these things are thick. Let me do it away from you yeah. so I don't... Uh... Stab me. Yeah. Well, I just did already. <laughs> it's just this very weird, awkward moment. But the detectives try to breeze past it. And then all three of them, the two investigators and Cassandra, decide to eat, quote, family style, according to the detective. And during that, she asks one of the detectives who's already finished their fries if they want some of hers. Hmm. 
At one point in the interrogation, she's asked about how the plan came to kill her grandparents like, came about. And she brings up the previous charge against her grandparents that she has, that she's currently on probation for, for physically assaulting her grandparents. They, I got a charge from them because, you know, like, I fought them, you know. I might have broken, like, my grandpa's ribs when, you know, for that charge for simple assault mm -hmm. and simple battery, you know. And it just like, it just got really worse. We just kept arguing all the time. And then, I don't know, I guess things like just seemed different. They didn't look at me the same anymore. Yeah, cause you but broke. Then, She's what? saying her grandparents did not look at her the oh same anymore. Oh my God. Yo. I don't know, it was, Yo. it's like, they're, the vibe that they have was like, they didn't really know what to do. They didn't really know like how to like, be around me, I guess. They didn't really know how, like, how to talk to me. Because you're crazy. Which, first of all, she keeps saying, you know, as a way to make it seem like her actions are much more understandable. I don't but know. But no, we don't know. I don't know. In addition, all. it's crazy that she's shocked that her grandparents are treating her differently after she broke her grandpa's ribs and physically assaulted them. In another notable part of the interrogation, Cassandra is asked about her controlled aggression. The investigators know that she grew up with martial arts and they were intrigued. Martial arts is all about controlled aggression. Did Cassandra feel controlled aggression when she went to kill her grandparents or was it an emotional decision in that moment? I stopped doing Kung Fu for a while just cause you know, my mind wasn't there. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just, all of my feelings were and my emotions were all over the place and I wasn't able to focus. So that really affected, you know, my Kung Fu. But when I was there, you know, like, I don't know, like just all of my emotions kind of just like came out when it was happening. Like I was just angry and I was sad, but I was heartbroken at the same time, you know? Cause it was just like, you know, know, why did all of this stuff have to you know, happen with my family? You know? mm -hmm. Like, why did I have to deal with all this bullshit, you know? And no. It's just, I, I just kind of really got tired of it and I couldn't handle it. Why you, you the center of the bullshit though. Your grandparents just wanted to take care of you. And for some reason, instead of, instead of acknowledging who the actual enemies were, you just transferred that to your grandparents somehow. Cause your step, your mom and your stepdad, the, the real enemies, that's really who we, this reminds me of like, 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 when girls find out that niggas cheat and instead of attacking the nigga, they attack the girl. Boy, girl, you better go figure out who your real enemy is. Instead, you just kill people who love you for real. That's crazy. Now you're gonna go to jail all by yourself. Because we both know that love that you got towards Johnny, boy, it might last. You the type of crazy shorty, I'm talking like she here, but she the type of crazy shorty where that love might last, but I highly doubt. I don't know. I could be speculating. Highly doubt Johnny gonna feel this way in a year. <laughs> Boy, he gonna see somebody else and they gonna look super purple. And he's like, whoa, where have you been on my man? But who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll have a, a better relationship than I do. I, I just kind of really got tired of it and I couldn't handle up. it anymore. Like... That is. I just kept exploding inside almost. Oh, yeah. Other notable moments include when Cassandra is asked about her shopping spree, she stated that she took her grandma's debit card. And they ask, do you remember what kind of bank it was or anything? Do you remember what color it was? It was gray. Gray, like but a... It had like, it, it said like C-I-T-I... -I. Oh, city. City, city. city yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a bank. Cassandra makes this weird face where she sticks out her tongue and rolls her eyes, like shaking her head, like, duh, how could she not know, duh, and she looks slightly embarrassed. Cassandra tells the detectives that she only used the money found in her grandma's wallet because she could not locate her grandpa's. She says, I couldn't find his wallet, so I had no idea where his wallet was. I just had my grandma's wallet in her purse. The investigators tell her he hid it underneath the bed. We found his wallet. Cassandra's nostrils literally flare and she starts smirking. You did? She throws her head back and rolls her eyes and she has this smirk on her face, like almost unbelievable, this guy. Smart guy, we almost didn't find his wallet and his cell phone, they were under his bed. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's where he started hiding it. I couldn't find his wallet, so I had no idea where his wallet was. So I just had my grandma's wallet in her purse. They hid it underneath his bed. We found his wallet. Oh, yeah. 
smart guy because we almost didn't find his it. His wallet either. and his cell phone were under his bed. Really? Yeah. I guess that's where he started hiding it. This is so creepy. Yeah. Like, she is so unbothered. It's like a game. I don't yeah, get she's it. Having I'm a blast. Very confused. Having like, fun. By the time that the case is ready to go to trial, the media could not call the two Romeo and Juliet or even Bonnie and Clyde, not because they deserve those titles, though, but because the couples, they turn on each other. They had broken up since their arrest and were now blaming each other for their crimes. <laughs> they didn't even get to jail. <laughs> nah, my speculation was correct. They didn't even make it to the sale. That's crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hold on, let me see. They had broken up since their arrest the and were now blaming each other for their crimes. Oh, I love that. Both I do of them love plead that. guilty and receive two life sentences. God dang. Oh, I love that. Both of them plead guilty and receive two. That nigga head shaped crazy. I'm sorry. Two life sentences plus Good. 21 years. However, they are both eligible for parole in 60 years. Now, one of the biggest debates in the courtroom was would they have committed this without the influence of each other? And it seems that most netizens believe that Cassandra was actually the driving force. Even Cassandra's friends say, Cassandra is, I was really close with her. However, she's always just been a very selfish person. She always has been the type that doesn't care about anyone but herself. She just wants to do her own thing. She would get into violent fights with people and she just always has this, oh, I don't care, I'll defend myself attitude. Mm. I mean, the cops had to have been called out to her house a bunch of times. She was on probation during the time for hitting her grandma. Do you think that Cassandra was in love with Johnny? The police asked one of her friends. Honestly, Cassie's the type of person to use anyone she possibly could to get what she wanted. I mean, I did love Cassie as a person, but honestly, very, very selfish. She only cared about herself. I don't know what was going on in Johnny's mind because I've only met him a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did know him. They said he didn't seem like the type to kill anyone or anything. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to get by in his life. He was pretty nice. A lot of people speculate that Cassandra fed Johnny, whether it was lies, exaggerations, or a story about how evil her grandparents and her whole family was. Perhaps Johnny, with his drug addiction and his ADD and his depression disorder, perhaps he felt like he had to protect her, is what some people say. I'm not defending Johnny at all. I think nah. what both of them did is insane and heinous. Yeah. Now, as for the remorse, because... I think both of them have differing levels of remorse and it's Cassandra's grandparents who are killed. Cassandra said, I mean, I feel like a terrible person. I feel like the worst person on the planet. But at the same time, it was just kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I feel heartbroken, but I don't know. It's really weird. Like, I'm just really sad about it. And that's like one of the reasons why I wanted to, you know, kill myself, you know, and just overdose because there was so much stuff going on between me and my grandparents already. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it anymore. She has most remorse for herself. Right. It's all about During her. the sentencing, Johnny, Johnny's statement is oh a little bit God. unhinged, if I can be honest with you. Oh, he said he found God in prison, which is, and this has nothing to do with religious preference or affiliation, but I think he chose the worst possible time to bring up his newfound love for Jesus Christ. During his statement to the court, Johnny says, I would like to express my deepest apology to the Bjorge family. I'm so sorry for the pain and grief that I've caused you all. There's absolutely no justifiable reason for the circumstances of why I'm here today. When I look back, I see what was truly lost and I was searching for love from the wrong source. Yet I know what I have done is evil and is deserving of hellfire. I have not been a responsible person in the past, but I would like to start if I could right now. He continues, please, I beg you all, forgive me for what I have done. It is with a deep desire that my foolishness not be the reason for all of you to be unforgiving and have a hardened heart. Death sentence. <laughs> all that talking, boy, slow down. Oh my God. No. Rejected, denied. Boo. Boo. <laughs> On God, on God, boy, I'm I'm looking at this nigga like, no, no, I'm sorry, goodbye, <laughs> goodbye, nigga. <laughs> right now, 
He continues, please, I beg you all, forgive me for what I have done. It is with a deep desire that my foolishness not be the reason for all of you to be unforgiving and have a hardened heart for what is written. For if you forgive men for their trespasses, your heavenly Ain't father no will also nigga. forgive you. But if you do not forgive men for their trespasses, neither your father forgive you and your trespasses. Boy, you are not a pastor. Basically, to put it simply, he's telling the victim's family to forgive him unless they want to burn in the yeah. vast depths of hell for the rest of eternity. He's saying, God told you so. So, so you better forgive me or else you are going to be the one that goes to hell and not me. Jesus. Which is the most unhinged thing to say during your statement for a double homicide. But he continues, I would now like to address another murder that has taken place. The murder victim was a male. He was honestly a great role model for everyone and anyone who looked up to him. I tortured him. I laughed at him while he died. I beat him to the point of knowing no one could recognize him. Is he talking about how he pummeled Randall with his fist until he yeah. passed out? Then he grabbed a knife and stabbed him and then slit his throat? Is that what he's addressing right now? The grandpa? Yeah. Johnny continues. That man's name is Jesus Christ. What he, is going on? He was sent by God to die on the cross. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> Boy, have you lost your mind? Because I'll help you find it. <laughs> oh, God. Nah, what? What he, is going on? He was sent by God to die on the cross and shed his innocent blood so that we could be forgiven for all of our sins. We as the human race can now have fellowship with God, our father, through his son, Jesus, who dies, but was risen by the power of God. The oh. judge was not having it. She said, I'm not sure that I've ever imagined such a well-planned, despicable, heinous act to be committed by two such young people. Your behavior lacks any sense of humanity or morality. I listened to the facts that were outlined and I just continue to be stunned that you sealed areas <laughs> so that you could make sure the smell of decaying human flesh would not be noticed. Oh, that you had parties and ordered Chinese food with two people that you had brutally murdered laying upstairs. Many the judge of snapped. The judge snapped. felt a very deep, cutting sense of betrayal when they found out what happened to them. Yeah. One of Randall's siblings would say, their devotion was so profound, it makes the betrayal even more devastating. I wake up in the middle of the night and begin to be haunted by what happened. Was Randall awake when he was attacked? Was he frightened? Was he in agony long? He had endured so many physical trials in his life. Did he die quickly? Did Cassie see his face? Did he see Cassie's face? Someone he loved so much, someone he had been so proud of, and someone he had given so much to. My heart is still broken thinking about it. At night, I wake up and I see dear Wendy. How did she die? She must have died inside first. Seeing Cassie looking into her eyes must have crushed her spirit, the one person that she was so devoted to. Did Wendy die inside then? Or was it when she saw her high school sweetheart laying dead next to her? I can only hope that shock numbed her. Johnny and Cassie brutalized her little body and her spirit. What level of disregard and disrespect does it take to do something like that? How could anyone be so maliciously inhumane? I wonder what lack of compassion compels someone to act out such a heinous murder. I want to forget Wendy's Whoa, the, 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 spirit. Was that what me? level of disregard and disrespect does it take to do something like that? How could anyone be so maliciously inhumane? I wonder what lack of compassion compels someone to act out such a heinous murder. That's not murder. me, tribe. I want to forget Wendy's slippers on the fifth stair leading up to the death rooms. Wendy had such tiny feet, and those little slippers stayed there, perched there, for days after the murders. Did they stay there while Cassie and Johnny were partying with their friends? I don't want to know. Damn. And that is the case of 17-year-old Cassandra and 19-year-old Johnny. What are your thoughts on it? I'm just keep getting shocked by these yeah, teens yeah. that's just so cold-blooded. This shit is shocking it for real. It makes me scared to have children. <laughs> say, I say mean, that I do shit think that chest. there perhaps were things that happened along the way, not by Wendy and Randall, but yeah, maybe it was influence of that. peers' environment. I don't know, but it's just terrifying. Yeah. Because these are your flesh and blood. This yeah. is your children. These are your children's children, your grandchildren. Yeah. How can they turn on you like that? <laughs> Especially when it's so undeserving. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Please leave it in the comments. Be safe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye, Nuna. Like, tribe. I'm terrified of having kids. I'm not going to lie. Think about, like, bro, the thing is, and I remember I was talking something similarly to, to the child, like, yesterday or the day before. 
like parents will have a kid knowing that they can't raise that kid in a way where that child can be normal and survive because if we're being honest bruh a lot of a lot of cassandra's situation probably stems from her origin with her mom and, and her stepdad and, and potentially going through a lot of abuse you feel me i don't know if that story is even true but if it is that is a place of trauma that hasn't been addressed if that's not true then shorty just crazy as hell she's an outlier i'm not gonna lie because there is a sense of like i my parents have pissed me off to the point where i barely even talk to them sometimes and i i worry because they're not young they're not getting younger but i couldn't i love them like i could never kill them that fills me with a sense of direct horror you know what i'm saying like i could they piss me off they've hurt my feelings horrifically i've cried snot tears because of my parents i've ran away from home because of my parents they're not accepting people you know what i'm saying but like i love them that place my origin has trauma rooted in it also but i don't view that as like they need to die i view that as that's just the way life is my nigga like bro we all human we all make mistakes we all do things that hurt other people that's just part of life that's just that's a relatively normal way of viewing life you know what i'm saying something must have happened to her bro and johnny because what the hell what the hell the fact that they turned on each other is very amusing though that's that tickles me just right i'm not gonna lie to you bro and then this nigga talking about some jesus christ of nazareth i found him in jail i'm good now forgive me or else you're going to hell like what 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 though what are you trying to say <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and it is alarming, and also, that nigga might be legitimately slow too, I don't know, a lot of I, I, a lot of I, I don't knows for this situation, I'm keeping it honest, let me know what y'all think, I'm curious myself, I'm not gonna lie, I personally think they need to just stay in jail for the rest of their lives, and go through lifelong therapy, cause I don't even think there's a solution for this, I think, Cassandra is gonna live her life not thinking that she Loki did anything wrong. Not gonna hold you. We back on that Ron Mango wave. Thank y'all for watching this with me because I definitely can't watch this shit alone. I'm not gonna lie. I really appreciate y'all for watching this with me for real. I'm gonna end this here though. Enough of me. No, seriously, enough of me. It's been your boy Child Louis. And in case I don't see you, just in case, just in case. Great, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> Good night, child. Good night. <laughs> it's the end. Huh? Leave a like and share it to your friends and your kin. Huh? When I post a video, I'm gonna need y'all to attend. Huh? Thank you for the view, huh? but I ain't done with you. 2023, I'm about to be Jordan with the flu. Huh? Yeah, join a tribe. Huh? Yeah, join a tribe. I'm gonna need y'all to subscribe.